All right, the goal of this video is to prove that if a function f is piecewise smooth, then the Fourier series of that function converges uniformly to a function f. And the meaning of piecewise smooth is the following. Uh, first of all, let us denote uh, by c 2 pi n uh, the set of functions of class cn, that is m times continuously differentiable functions uh, with period of 2 pi. And now we say f is piecewise smooth if f is uh, f belongs to c two pi zero. This means f is a continuous function, and f prime belongs to r two pi two. That is uh, square integrable. And in this video, we only consider the complex Fourier series. That is, if f is given, its Fourier series is expressed as this, uh, with com possibly com complex coefficients, okay, x. And the Fourier coefficients are defined by this formula. F of x exponential of negative i k x dx. All right. First thing we prove is Bessel's inequality. Bessel's inequality. That is, if f is square integrable, then uh, 2 pi sum of the the absolute value squared of the Fourier coefficients is less than or equal to this integral. Uh, the, the square modulus of this. Okay, let's prove this. Uh, first of all, uh, let us define Sn of x as the partial sum of the Fourier series. That is, k okay, from negative n to n, positive n. And ck exponential of uh, i kx. And then, let's consider this integral. Uh, the modulus f of x minus sn of x squared. Okay, now we are considering a complex Fourier series. So this absolute value means the absolute value of a complex number. Okay, so this is equal to uh, f x and sn of x times the complex conjugate of this. So x and Sn of x complex conjugate dx. Okay. And the complex conjugate over sum is sum of complex conjugate, the sum of uh, difference. And if you just expand this, we have this times this, so we have f of x squared, absolute value squared, and the minus f of s, uh, wait a minute, uh, okay, f of x, s, n bar, and s, n of x, f bar, plus uh, s, n squared absolute value squared dx. 
and now let's substitute uh, this into here and here now let's split the integral and the next one is x and uh, sum of this minus n n uh, we are taking the complex conjugate of this so that becomes c k bar minus i k x dx and this part uh, that is ck exponential of i k x and f bar dx and uh, uh, let's write on the next line so this is C K E uh, plus K and K prime uh, minus C K bar minus I K X D X and uh, if you expand this. Uh, you have something like this and uh, c k bar and exponential of i k minus i prime x dx and as we have seen before uh, so this term when integrated becomes either 0 or 2 pi because of the orthogonality of this basis. And also, uh, this times this uh, becomes the Fourier coefficient, and this times this becomes the, the complex conjugate of the Fourier coefficients. So this becomes uh, the first term unchanged. And the second term becomes, so uh, we can swap the sum and the integral. And the sum becomes this, so ck bar, and integral of this times this is, the C, is ck, right? And similar for this one. And that is k is uh, ck and uh, ck bar, and uh, this one is ck uh, minus n uh, k and k from negative n to plus positive n. And this becomes, uh, oh wait a minute, so this is, uh, 2 pi is missing here. So if we integrate this, we get 2 pi. And uh, this one becomes 2 pi, and uh, Kronecker's delta, k, k prime, and k prime, but uh, if you sum over k prime, then this becomes one when k prime is equal to one. Otherwise, everything is zero, so we have two pi and uh, c k. Uh, should be prime here and c k c k bar. Okay, so one of them cancels this. And uh, this becomes uh, C K absolute value squared. 
But this left hand side, to begin with, this integrand is always non negative. Therefore, this is uh, greater than or equal to zero. So this right hand side must be also greater than or equal to zero. Therefore, we have this. Now, uh, the left hand side doesn't depend on n. The right hand side, this is always positive, and uh, if we take the limit, and going to infinity, we have 2 pi and sum of uh, k from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then uh, the inequality still holds. Okay, so this is greater than or equal to this, and we have the desired result, and we are done. Now, let us prove our main result. Theorem, if f is a continuous function and f prime its derivative is a square integrable, then uh, the Fourier series of f converges uniformly to f. Here we use this double arrow. Uh, to mean indicate that uh, the convergence is uniform. Okay, let's prove this. Uh, first of all, let us express the Fourier series of the derivative f prime as this: k from negative infinity to positive infinity and gamma k, and exponential of k i k x. And gamma k is, of course, the Fourier coefficient of uh, f prime. Okay, so just in case, uh, that's this f prime of x and exponential of negative i k x dx. Okay, now we're assuming that f prime is square integrable. So that means this. Uh, uh, not infinity, uh, two pi, and the absolute value of f prime squared is finite. And this is because f prime belongs to uh, this class. Okay, now let's consider this one. So integrate this. Uh, the square of it, the square of it, uh, k from it's implied that k varies from negative infinity to positive infinity, okay, and consider this. Okay, if you expand this, uh, by the way, this is complex number, so this is absolute value of complex number. That is this times its complex conjugate. And if you uh, again use the orthogonality of these functions then the result should be equal to the sum of uh, gamma k absolute value squared times 2 pi. Now let's use the lemma we have just proved. And so this quantity here is less than or equal to this integral f prime squared and by assumption this is finite so that means this sum is finite okay now let's calculate the uh, Fourier coefficient ck of f okay so this is by definition uh, this f of x times exponential of negative i k x dx now we apply the, uh, let's integrate by parts. So this becomes one over i k f of x d i k x. 
uh, minus minus plus here and k f prime by k x. But this one, you know, f is a periodic function with period of two pi, and so is this term. That means uh, if we uh, take the difference between the values at pi and negative pi, they have the same value because of the periodicity. So therefore, this will disappear. This will be just zero. So what's left is this one. But uh, this part is the definition of the Fourier coefficient of f prime. So this is equal to 2 pi over i k lambda k. And of course, here we're assuming that c is not equal to 0, uh, k is not equal to 0. OK, so after all, we have ck equals to uh, gamma k over i k. k is non zero. Now, let's consider the sum of ck, uh, absolute value of ck, where k is non zero. So this is equal to. Uh, this uh, so one over k absolute value times absolute value of gamma k, and by using the uh, Cauchy Schwarz inequality, we have square root of sum of k squared and square root of sum of gamma k squared. So this is from Cauchy Schwartz. But notice that this summation here converges, it's finite. And this summation here, we just show that it's finite, right? This is finite. Therefore, this is finite. That means the, the series of the Fourier coefficient of f is absolutely convergent. And that implies uh, the Fourier series of f converges uniformly. To f. And we are done. Now, uh, the left hand side doesn't depend on n. The right hand side, this is always positive. And uh, if we take the limit and go into infinity, we have 2 pi and sum of uh, k from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then uh, the inequality still holds. Okay, so this is greater than or equal to this, and we have the desired result, and we are done.